Hey, hey, you two. Welcome in. Part 39. Here we are. We're tied with Mass Effect. At the time of this recording, uh, this is the now tied for the longest playthrough, which means it will be the longest playthrough because I'm pretty sure we're not going to finish the game tonight. So uh, thanks for making it all the way to part 39. I anticipate this will be a lovely episode, so strap in. I appreciate all of your support. Please leave a thumbs up on the stream. Leave a comment down below. Follow the links down in the description. Come hang out with us. Share the videos. By this point, you know everything that I hope that you are doing. I see the stats on people who are not subscribed to the channel who are still watching the channel. If you have made it to part 39 and you're still not subbed to the channel, please sub to the channel. Turn off all the notifications, but t please subscribe to the channel. It makes such a huge difference. All right. Uh, I am dealing with audio issues, kind of. So if there's a weird echo here at the start, just hang in there because if people in chat tell me that they hear an echo, then I will uh, reset my audio board. I just didn't want to do it because it kind of, it's a pain in the ass to do. Sean will edit it out. But just a heads up. So you don't bail on the video because you're like, oh God, the audio sucks. I will fix it. All right, here we go. To Ted Farrow's bunker. Dude, look at this guy rocking like a freaking. That door is all that stands between me and destiny. Indeed, my CO. Me and destiny. Right? Like, I can't emphasize enough the way that his, his language has shifted. This is about him. And all these people are just like, yeah, yeah, this is so, so great. So many years of toil have led up to this moment. This door. It will be worth it. I know it will, my lord. My lord. Ooh. All right. We're stupidly going to take the plunge here. Oh, this is... Your munificence. Oh, man. Stroke that guy's ego some more. Look at that thing. It's huge. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now we go to the fire temple. Wow. Just want to take a second to appreciate this. Can I go? Oh, okay. I can't go any lower than that. This water's got to be so hot. There's a rupture out there. Maybe a way in. I'm going to go up here first. This is so cool. I 
I want to know what direction it's. Like, what direction is it moving that wire? It looks like. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, baby. Yeah. This could get me inside. Entrance to Thebes. Oh, baby. Now, the beautiful leverage we have here for Aloy is that if we get in here, we do not immediately need to run out and go give them whatever they want. Like, we could take total inventory of this and use this to our advantage. In fact, it would be very smart to do so. I don't trust them. We don't have any reason to trust them. I'm not a big believer in just immediately trusting them unconditionally. Hey, looks like this tunnel leads deeper into the structure. Oh boy. Or don't open it and say, yeah, like I couldn't get in there. Sorry, guys. Like they don't have to know whether we were able to get in here or not. In fact, they could just as easily think that I die in here. Like, oh, she drowned. They don't know anything about what's in here. Unless they've seen thieves in their like hollows. It's this. Glad it still works all these years later under the water. Stop the turbine. Good. You gotta go see what's out back here, right? <laughs> don't Aloy we don't why would we do that why would we do that we know what we need is in here why on earth would we let the Quen in immediately it's such a bad idea oh okay that door can't be opened okay oh jeez Thieves. Oh, look at that. Teddy getting after it in the weight room. It looks like an exercise room. Yeah. Look at that. Got his own home gym. Rip Grigori. Here I am again. Hiding in the gym. Writing to stay sane in this crazy place. Oh, I can't believe Grigori's dead. Our so-called spiritual leader was fine yesterday, and then suddenly passed away in his sleep, and no one will talk to me about it. They treat me like a child, whispering behind my back, as if I can't cope with death, even after the end of the world. Okay, so Teddy wasn't here by himself, apparently. Which I guess would make sense. Our spiritual leader. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some culty shit going on down here, but we're going to reserve judgment for when we figure out what actually happened.
This is wild, man. We are in the final resting place of Ted Farrell right now. I just want to appreciate... The living area. It's pretty big, too. I just want to appreciate the gravity of this moment. Bathrooms in here? Yeah. Okay. There were berries in there. Delicious berries from 900 years ago. Don't eat those berries, Aloy. Don't do it. There's nothing normal about a scientist, his daughter, a guru, and well, let's face it, a harem living through the end times in the trillionaire's underground survival bunker. But now that Kagori's gone, I'm worried things will get even weirder. He helped keep Ted stable for a couple of years, sort of. Without him, who knows? And we don't even understand what happened to him. The girl's right. Nothing normal about Ted. Oh, baby. This is juicy. Grigori Fossbox Journal. Did I tell Ted what he needed to hear? Or only what he wanted to hear? Did I want to lead him to salvation? Or was I simply seeking my own? I invited him to consider his being in a universe bereft of the trappings of techno-nihilism. But did he instead annihilate his own past along with the rest of the world? Oh God, what have I done? Oh, I don't know, dude. Wish I could be here. Wish I could have seen it. I really hope we get some cool hollows in here. Like, I, I really want to know what went down. That's one strong can of pot. I know everyone's reeling after Grigori's uh, untimely demise. He was a deeply spiritual man who wasn't afraid to rip back the curtain and gaze where few men dare. I've asked Dr. Sumtau to, you know, check on what happened to him. I'm sure he had some kind of condition or something. The main point is that while we certainly miss him, we will go on. Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, something tells me it didn't turn out that way. I also would love to know how far into this they were when this happened, you know? Because, like, if they don't... If this wasn't, like, fresh... Let's hope this is the way to the main door so I can let the Quinn in. Uh, not yet. Oh, kept him stable for a couple years. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so we're... we're, we're... How many? Oh, boy. This is not as big of a of an area as I thought it was going to be. Look at this place. It's pretty fancy for a survival bunker. He says as he opens it up to the main foyer. I lied. I really I really got to just shut my mouth for an extra like 5 seconds sometimes. Like the amount of times that I've said some shit like that and then the actual thing ended up being the total opposite. 
Dude, this has some serious, like, Egypt vibes. Like, Ted Pharaoh the Pharaoh vibes. Look at that. There. The door. Let's hope I can open it from the inside. Ted's women repulse me, okay? They're like contestants on a housewife sim preening for the hubby's attention. But Brianna, the hollow singer, she's different. She's always been nice to me. And I love her voice, which has been conspicuously silent since Grigori died. She doesn't speculate or gossip like the others. She knows something. I can tell. And I'm gonna find out what it is. And then we're gonna find out what it is. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you gonna play some Horizon with us? You wanna see what happened to Teddy Pharaoh? Okay. They're like, Egyptians love cats, so I'm gonna come over here. What about the main door? Dude, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want to bring him in. I don't want to do it. That looks like some kind of access control. Ah, good. An emergency exit function. Emergency exit initiated. What a door. The door is open. Destiny is upon us. I knew you could do it. What's going on? You're about to get the open CO fire. The is on. preparing to enter Thebes. You're so cool, dude. Oh, why are you dressed like Ted Pharaoh? Oh, boy. I am Pharaoh, renewed. My essence is the same as his. Across the years, across the generations, his soul is my soul. His will is my will. We are sundered in only one way. I need his final testament, his deepest secrets. And now that the door is open, those secrets are within my grasp. When I have them, I will be complete as he was. I will have everything I need to save our homeland. And as Pharaoh did, the world. I got news for you, bro. Okay. I think there's some confusion here about who Pharaoh really was. No one. No. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. 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 Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> this is going to be one of those episodes. It's going to be one of those episodes where your boy's going to have the hand on the side of his head the whole way through. Oh boy. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna get in here. We're gonna get in real deep here. Real deep. Um. It is. Quite common. It happens really on the daily. 
for humans to idealize certain people or ideas of who people are. And the reason that people often do that is because they either see those idealized people as filling in the gaps of the things that they're insecure about, or they see them as being people who possess qualities that are akin to survival in whatever context it is that they're in. And will oftentimes take that idealization and then like really get into all of the minutia that surrounds it. And so as a way to illustrate this, uh, this guy slash these people idealized Ted Farrow because as far as they know, Ted Farrow accomplished the thing that their community is in desperate need of, which is the food, resources, all of that stuff. And Ted Farrow had it in spades, and he facilitated that process. And as far as they know, the records that they have of that are 100% accurate, and it would be easy to see Ted Farrow as the spearhead of that and then you idealize that. Now, the collective folks in the Quinn probably idealized Ted Farrow insofar as he was somebody who was capable of doing this, but because they have a hierarchical structure, it would stand to reason that the person at the top of the hierarchical structure would see themselves as the most close to that idealized figure. In the way that, like, I mean, the analog from real life that I can give you is, like, the idea... I was raised I was raised Catholic. I am not Catholic anymore. I was raised Catholic. Uh, like, we were always told the idea, like, the priest is closer to God than you are. Like, it's sort of like a... Uh, it's an extension. Like, you can, you can get closer to God by talking to... So this guy, CEO, is essentially, like closer to Ted Farrow by virtue of the fact that he is the CEO of the corporate structure society that they have. And so because Ted Farrow is somebody that he idealizes, it is very likely that this guy has intensely studied the Ted Farrow that is in the VODs, hollows. And that would mean that not only would he idealize Ted Farrow the person, he would idealize certain traits that Ted Farrow has. Which is why this guy would present this way. So maybe he possesses a similar temperament. Maybe he just happens to be similar in how he orients himself to the world. But it is more likely that in studying Ted Farrow, he has taken in his mannerisms. He has idealized the way that Ted Farrow talked to people, the way that he carried himself, the way that he dressed. There's all sorts of stuff that would happen here that would essentially... And then if he buys into his own story about the fact that he shares souls and is the essence of Ted Farrow... And that the only thing stopping him is just having access to Ted Farrow's final information. Now we are dealing with a man who essentially has lost his own identity to the idealization of who Ted Farrow is. So, that's a very long way of saying that when Aloy then tries to inject the truth into everybody's collective understanding of who Ted Farrow was, she has no chance. In fact, she puts herself in danger because there's no way that this guy who has wrapped every part of his identity up into Ted Farrow is going to just immediately say, oh, wait, what? He also ruined the world? Oh, shit. Maybe I shouldn't be that then. That would be like asking Aloy to 
disentangle herself from Elizabeth Sobeck. And she's not even as remotely intertwined, at least I don't think, identity-wise into that as this guy seems to be. Although you could make an argument that Aloy does very strongly follow certain paths because of her belief that she is Elizabeth Sobeck that she might not have otherwise followed. So, boy, howdy. She's not going to get any favors on this. What she's going to see is probably him doing what he's going to do, which is assimilate that information into his pre-existing understanding of Ted Farrow. And he's essentially going to call her either a heretic or a liar, or she's trying to impose herself on this moment. She's trying to hijack it. She thinks she's more important. Because remember, Ted Farrow reached a point where he essentially thought every single person in the world was against him, in part because they are. But this guy runs the same risk. He's seen that Ted Farrow orient himself to people that way. So as soon as Aloy pulls the Elizabeth Sobeck here and tries to hold Teddy accountable, Teddy's going to fight back. Like we essentially have Elizabeth and Teddy in front of us right now. And we're like reliving history. This is wild. So anyway, I know that was very long winded, but this is a really big moment here because Aloy is at huge risk in trying to fight him on this. And it's why she should have never opened the door in the first place. Because this is going to go bad. At least that's my anticipation of this. Knows better than I who he was, who he is, me. The renewer, greatest of the ancestors, the man who saved the world. And you, you understand, Sobek. You are her, Pharaoh's harbinger, his oh, assistant. Man. Come. We will descend into Thebes together, as it should be. Bring her the raiment. Raiment? Oh. As he is Pharaoh, you are so bad. <laughs> For an occasion, this momentous, shouldn't you wear proper business attire? <laughs> oh, Oh, oh. <laughs> this is exactly why we should have come back. This is why we should have left. This is why we should have left and come back with an army. Right here, man. We are in big trouble. Look at Aloy's face. That's all of us right now. Oh, baby. Get that proper business attire on. Let's go. I mean, again, reflective of the societal structure they have. It's built on a corporate structure. It's it's hilarious to me how ingrained that is within them. Bring her the raiment. Oh my lord. Whoa. No, 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 no. No, I am not wearing that. No way. You will wear the proper attire to mark this moment. Or what? It is said Sobek valued life above all else. Is this true? Notice they aim at... Notice who they aimed at. I just, if you know, I, if you didn't catch it, take a, take a peek. He needs Aloy. He's not, Aloy has leverage here. Like she, she, she has, she has leverage, but... This guy could be completely unhinged. Again, if he is idealized Ted Farrow, this could go in so many terrible ways. Him being willing to sacrifice, uh, this, is a, this is a mess, all right? I've made it clear. I'm going to stop trying to say this is a mess, but this was going to be a mess from the very get-go. And uh, I, I, I thought about this after I went offline, after the last episode. And I, I do want to use this as an opportunity to really talk about it, which is there's this really interesting phenomenon that happens. Uh, and I'm, I guarantee you there are people who are going to hear me talk about this that have had this happen before. Maybe most, if not all of us. Our brain registers information from the environment that, and from interactions that we are not always consciously attending to. And sometimes people will describe, you usually, can, like, mod in modern times, you sort of hear it called the ick. 
where you could be in a situation and something in you just is telling you this doesn't feel right. Like you, you might not be able to pinpoint what it is. You may notice that you're spending a lot of your conscious mind trying to like override that or convince yourself that the ick is just that. It's like, oh, no, 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 it can't be. There is real power, my friends, to listening to that. Uh, it's different than anxiety. It, it's different from, you know, oh, gosh, I don't know that I want to go to school tomorrow because I got to give a speech and I got the ick. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. The ick is you're out at a bar with your friends and a group of people walk in and all of a sudden you get a really deep down guttural this doesn't feel right. Or you start talking to somebody and you get that you get you if you've if you've felt it, you know what it is. It is a very like evolutionary get out of here. Get out. Do what you need to do to survive this situation. And I know I had it. When we walked, I mean, really when we met this guy, but when we walked down this ramp to the door, boom, it was there, right? And usually that feeling comes up because of a recognition of incongruence between what you would generally perceive to be like a safe and anticipated environment. And that incongruence is not sometimes something that you're able to necessarily like pick out immediately. You just feel it in a very guttural way. Had Aloy listened to the ick here, we may not be in this situation, right? Like, I had to do this in order to push the narrative forward. Like, it's not like I have an option in this game to just not do it because I'd have to end the game right there and be like, well, we're not going to Ted Farrow's bunker. Aloy lived happily ever after until the planet was destroyed. But, like, it's not good. Uh, sometimes the ick is a false positive, but it's a very powerful force and people sometimes get into trouble by trying to convince themselves not to pay attention to it. And now here we are about to put some business attire on because we've got arrows pointed at ourselves in Alva. Also, Alva's taking this like a champ. Look at that. She's just like, yeah, they're aiming arrows at me. Figured that would happen. Fine. I'll wear your raiment. Oh boy. Yay, so pleased. Look at this guy. Oh boy, this is so bad. Should have run out of there. Oh boy. Now she's disarmed. Excellent. Shall we proceed? Look at this place. The grandeur. Pharaoh's domain. Simply breathtaking. Excellent. Somewhere in here, Pharaoh left his secrets. Let's go find them. You're magnificent. Perhaps we should leave guards behind to cover our exit? Indeed. Now let it be done. Okay. Well... All of a sudden, the door is unlocked. Great. To think all this preserved for the ages. As destiny intended for me. For me. It's all about me. How interesting, right? Ted Farrow, savior of the world. Seems to care about everybody, only cares about himself. Looks like the emergency exit function unlocked this door too. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Alva, can I say something to you? No? Okay. Ah, oh, boy. Pharaoh's visage, a monument to greatness. Truly. Marcio. It's 
It's a monument to something, I'll give you that. This is probably top three of the most uncomfortable moments I've ever experienced in a video game. I think this way might lead down. Excellent. I just parachute down? Oh boy. Remember every detail of his, Bohai, for posterity. It will be its own chapter in your legacy. Quite a palace Pharaoh built for himself. No less than he deserved. Wonder if Pharaoh had a foot bath in here. I've always wanted one of those. There will be no further discussion of your feet, Bohai. Also, Pharaoh didn't build this, so, uh, you know, he probably had an idea of what he wanted, but. What Grigori did. Brianna told me that Grigori hacked into restricted files and found out something awful. That Ted murdered important people who worked on Zero Dawn. Did Ted punish Grigori? Kill him for discovering what he did? How could that be? Dad said there wasn't a mark on Grigori's body. His heart just gave out find anything interesting i am um, i can't make sense of it yet smart uh again i think it was part 26 of zero dawn if you didn't watch it i really do recommend you go back and watch it um it was time stamped in the last episode it might be time stamped again in this one but i really recommend you watch it because this question of how could Ted Farrow do this? We severely underestimate how powerful ego salvation is, particularly for somebody like Ted Farrow, who is so deeply ego-driven. Um, believe it or not, we all have it in us to not necessarily be as maniacal as Ted Farrow, but we all have it in us to compensate and salvage our ego uh, to extreme forms relative to our own lived experience. It is... Ted desperately does not want subsequent humans to know what he did. He is aware of the fact that he messed up. This isn't Ted Farrow being completely ignorant. Ted Farrow is not insane. Ted Farrow is not oblivious to his actions and the way they affected the world. Ted Farrow is acutely aware of the way in which he was involved in the demise of humanity. He is acutely aware of that. And at this point, the only thing that Ted can control and try to manipulate is the future generation's perception of him. What's amazing is that with the Quen, he succeeded. The Quen remember him the way that he wants to be remembered. Like, it's kind of amazing. Like, literally, there is a group of people that follow that, that are like, yeah, dude, Ted Farrow was the shit. And it's because he expunged so many records. It's because their focuses aren't as up to date. Like all these sorts of things, like they didn't have access to Apollo. They didn't have access to like all of the information of the history of what happened up until the death of that entire generation. Because if they did, they would have the same orientation to Ted Farrow that we do. So Ted did everything he could to try to control the narrative. 
to find some solace in the fact that the last person to die knowing the truth of what Ted Farrow did was himself. That it would literally go to his grave and that he could find some level of respite from the fact that he knows that other people aren't going to be as tortured by his narrative as everybody else. Or as, as, as tortured by his narrative as he is. So he, it absolutely makes sense why Ted Farrow would, exp would try to expunge anything that is going to expose him, even among the people that are around him. Because he is so it's so desperate to be known and remembered as a a godlike figure who is lauded by all, who saved humanity. He wants to be remembered for his intentions, not his impact. And unfortunately, even trillionaires don't get that luxury. At least not with us, with the Gwen he did. Hogan, thanks for the uh, four months. I appreciate it. Why are they letting her keep that newer focus? Why aren't they demanding it from her? I think Alva's the only one that knows that she has an updated focus, would be my guess. I don't know. It was a great call by Aloy there saying that she doesn't know. And that she's got to figure it out. Because, man, oh man. The only power that Aloy has right now is the access to information. That her folk. I mean, I mean, I folk. Oh God, I hate this. I hate this. So, hey, this is weird. Yeah, I tried to warn you. Yeah, sort of. I'll explain everything if we survive long enough. Those certainly look threatening. Ah, <sighs> statues. The guardians of Pharaoh's domain. Those aren't statues. Look out! Get the CO out of here. I guess it's just us then. Oh, cool. Alva's sticking with me, huh? Not a bad hit. A little corrupted action. Fast. Well fought. Thanks. Where's Overseer Bohai? He has decided to return to the surface. A wise choice. We can't afford to lose any more diviners than necessary. So, no more delays. We must proceed. Are those the first corruptors we fought in Forbidden West? I don't remember if we fought them. Brianna didn't wake up this morning. She's gone. Just like Grigori. I'm looking up at the giant, hideous statue of Ted in the Great Hall. At his eyes. And I know now that he's watching. He's watching us all. He's always had power over us. I just never knew how much. Did you discover some data? A fragment. A, a testament to Ted's power. Ah. Ah. A testament to your power. If Aloy really wanted to be smooth, that's how she would do it. Instead of saying a testament to Ted's power, it should be like a testament to Ted's, I mean, your power. Because you could disarm him uh, by stroking his ego. As hard as it would be to do, uh, that would give you a lot of control. Because the more antagonistic Aloy is toward him, yes, that looks the like worse she way. is from a power standpoint. Dude, 
this is so unnecessary. The world's ending and Ted Farrow's like, yeah, man, give me some cool ass Egyptian statues for my big ass bunker. Who would have even agreed to build this shit? Unless he like promised them that they could like stay in it and be safe. I mean, there's any sorts of manipulation he could have done to get people to do this, but ugh. Controlled environment. When I built this place, when its special systems were designed, I knew what I wanted. Protection, of course. An unlimited power source, that was a given. But also... Control. Over every possible eventuality. After all, you never know what will happen, especially when the human element is involved. What did you find? Trust me. You don't want to know. I guess I don't. Ted's easy, man. He's an easy one to understand. Ever deeper we go. Yes, indeed. You excited? How's your chub doing? What is that? A reclining throne attached to some kind of apparatus. I wonder what it does. An impressive setup. What is it for? I'm sorry, CEO. I don't know. My focus can't read the data here. What about the living ancestor? Is the data lost to her? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Ted's getting impatient. How can I explain to him that you can't really prove an organism has achieved immortality in a day, a week, or even a year? The question literally embodies the idiom, only time will tell. I have no idea how long his body will survive. All I know is that it will last a lot longer than mine. As far as the therapy goes, we've graduated from two steps forward, one step back, to two steps forward, one step sideways. With each treatment, his cells regenerate more effectively. At this point, I don't think they're aging at all. But mutations keep popping up, and each one has to be treated individually. So far, my strategy of pharmaceutical whack-a-mole seems to be working, but for, now, but for how long and with what side effects? The irony is, I've probably achieved more for the field in these last two years than the entire industry did in the last 20. But no one's around to appreciate it. Ted sure doesn't. These days... He doesn't seem to appreciate anything. Sompta. Yeah, okay, so he wants to be immortal. That's understandable. But he's also going to have to deal with the misery of what it would be to be immortal. You go literally insane when everybody around you dies, because then you're just in perpetual solitary confinement. Uh... Ugh. Fosbach. I never thought Ted would actually do it. I assumed the whole thing was just to scare me, to keep me under control, to show what he might do to Kanye if I stepped out of line or screwed up his treatments. Certainly kept me motivated. What does it say about me, about us? There's so few of us left and we're still keeping secrets from each other. Such terrible secrets. Sompto. Mmm. You know, the wild thing about the way that Ted Farrow existed around other humans at this time is that, like, his threats to them in terms of, like, I will, whether it was, like, something like, I'll kill you or whatever, uh, are relatively idle because he needs them to meet his, like, to meet the end that he wants. 
So if Somtao is the only person who possesses the capabilities to give Ted treatments to keep him immortal, then it isn't in Ted's best interest to do something to him to jeopardize that. The thing that people in positions of power like Ted often try to do is create the illusion that there is nothing you can do about it or that you must bend to their will or else. But the reality is like, it's not that his leadership is not as stable of a foundation as he thinks. If, if everybody in this bunker who is part of the team that's trying to make him immortal says, no, nah, Ted, we're not going to do it. He loses all his power. He doesn't actually have power because he needs them for what he wants. The heart, and this is why also people who are in positions of leadership who use it for their own self-interest, like Ted, will try to pit people against each other. Because if your constituents all unionize against you, you lose all of your power. If you keep people against each other and pitted and thinking that you can take care of them better than the other and whatever, then you get people fighting for you. You get people doing things that they may not otherwise do if they bound with the people that are at their level rather than thinking that they can get up to Ted Farrow's level by being buddy-buddy with them. The reality is none of them will be. They're all disposable to Ted Farrow. The only person that Ted Farrow cares about is Ted Farrow. He only cares about you insofar as you allow him to accomplish what he wants for himself. He will never care about you the way that you think you care about him. And you're not going to get to his level because Ted Farrell would never let you get to his level because that's a threat. It's, 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 the, it's, it's shocking and also common how often certain people in positions of power can get their constituents to do their bidding because of the idea that they could get where they want to go because of the idea that you could advance through the nepotism of that. When if you're talking about somebody with an ego like Ted, you got no chance. Your power is in collective resistance. I just want to take in Scan every detail the device, of this. If you will. Sorry, you can't read. It's corrupt. Don't know anything about it. Oh. Pardon the exit. Okay. Please, scan the device. You can wait a second. Case in point, though, right there, before I listen to this data point, right? This guy is acting like he's Mr. Hotshot Leader Guy, has all the control. But who actually has the control right now? Who actually possesses the device that's capable of scanning that device and learning more about what it is? I do. I have power right now. And he's going to do what he can to try to make it so that I can't recognize that because then he can continue to try to influence me in certain directions. But if Aloy can connect with the fact of like, no, 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 I got the control here. And I possess the power to fight your guards if you try to use them against me. It's a powerful thing to understand. Doesn't mean that she has to exert it right now. She can go along with it, but it's very important to understand the areas in which you have power. You did this for him? You put, like, off switches in everyone's heads? Kenya, you mustn't judge me. Oh, boy. I had no choice. Yes, you did. If I said no, what would he do to us? What would he do to you? You're my little girl. I was trying to keep you alive. For what, Dad? Seriously, why? So we can be trapped in this underground nightmare? You know what we have to do. Please. Did you find a recording, Aloy? Yeah. I'll share it with you later. Oh, man. If Ted controls the entire environment via biometric security, even if they had the numbers, I don't think they could rebel. No, but it's not necessarily in Ted's best interest to kill him. That's the thing. 
right? If you have collective resistance, sure, Ted could kill them all, but then he doesn't have what he needs in order to live forever. Like, there's still power there. And also, if right now, if we're talking about people being able to be killed immediately because of an off switch that's been installed by this guy, then Ted could kill you anyway as soon as he's done with you. As soon as you, as soon as you learn something you shouldn't learn, as soon as you're no longer useful to him, he can kill you anyway. So why not exert some degree of power to do what's best for, like, you or the collective good? I right? like... You know, when he says I didn't have a choice, well, he he did. And I know people get annoyed at me for constantly harping on this in every single playthrough, but he did. He didn't have to do it. Ted doesn't know how to do it. And sure, he could have, like, you know, Ted could have figured out a way to torture him, and that sucks. And, like, if that is the case, then it is understandable maybe why this guy preserved himself from being tortured and did this. And he's got to live with that decision. There is always a choice, even if one seems to be infinitely easier because of what the repercussions are of what you're doing. Or this guy does it wrong. You know, if Ted doesn't possess the ability or the knowledge to do it himself, and this guy does, and Ted's relying on him, he could install it wrong. He could install it in a way that it doesn't work. I mean, there's any number of things that he could have done. But again, I blame, I blame Ted for a lot of this. Like, I'm not trying to victim blame here. Ted facilitated an environment of fear. Ted did what so many people in history like Ted have done, which is make him believe he doesn't have a choice, which is what I just talked about five minutes ago. But the reason I harp on this is because it is always so important in any given situation that you are in to understand what your actual sphere of influence is, what your actual locus of control is, where you can absolutely make a choice, even if it's a harder one, whether it's in line with your values or whatnot. Because it is true that a lot of people don't see these situations as having any kind of choice. And that's a problem. That's what a person like Ted Farrow preys on is the idea that this guy was sitting there thinking, I don't have a choice. So many people end up doing bad things because they think they didn't have a choice. They trick themselves into believing that they don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to be creative with understanding what your choices are, but there are choices. And I, it's wild to me how often I get fought on that. You control more things than you think. You also don't control more things than you think. So it's important to really understand what you can control. It will at the very least make you skeptical to influence of people who are trying to get one over on you. Tell me what your focus reveals about the device. In a minute. medical chair made a minor adjustment to the gene therapy regimen and added a new cocktail to treat the symptoms caused by the mutations hopefully there will be some stabilization after the next treatment god knows what ted will do to us if there isn't the early results were so promising no signs of aging, no cellular degeneration, but now... Oh, if only I had access to my old lab in Bangkok, or my old colleagues, or my old liquor cabinet. Stop it. Got to stay positive. For Kanya. Oh. I mean, this is, it's so dark. It's so dark. I mean, back in Zero Dawn, when we were going through all this stuff, uh, the reality is, like, all of this is terrible. The, the whole scenario of what happened to humanity is just fuel for nightmares. Uh, I, so, 
I'm going to expand on my point that I have been making here as we've been walking down this tunnel. And uh, I am going to give a bit of a heads up that what I'm going to say uh, might be unsettling to hear for some people. So if you start finding yourself like pretty uncomfortable with what I'm talking about and you need to like kind of take a break or you need to skip a little bit to when I stop talking here, um, you please do that. But it's worth talking about here um, because this is an extreme scenario. And, uh, you know, I like to talk about all of it. So when he's going around this medical chair and he's talking about how he has to make everything perfect uh, because he's worried about what Ted might do to them. We could infer that that potentially means that there is some threat of torture. And that is a very strong motivating force for people to do what Ted says. Especially if he possesses that kind of power. Like if he's got full security system, robots, everything else ready to go to bend to his will to torture these people if they don't do what, they, what Ted wants them to do, then yeah, he is forcing their hand. There is a form of control that could be exerted here in order to avoid that, which is one that I would understand and is a choice, which would be for him to kill himself. Uh, I am not like pro-suicide in a, in a like general sense, okay? So like don't go running off being like Dr. Mix promoting suicide, but suicide in this kind of extreme scenario is an option. It is one where if he really decided this is miserable, we can't leave this bunker. I am under the threat of torture if I do something that is so deeply against my, my values and what it is that I want to do or what is for the good of humanity. And that's something that I strongly connect with. If I possess the knowledge to be able to do all of this stuff that I'm doing for Ted, I mean, he has some degree of latitude. It doesn't sound like he's handcuffed. It doesn't sound like he's being escorted everywhere. It doesn't sound like his you know, accommodations have been uh, suicide proofed or anything like that. He might find a way to end his life in order to stop it from happening. That there could be a release from that kind of undue duress. And again, it's an extreme example. I'm not here promoting suicide as like the option that you should go to. But in an extreme situation like this, the most extreme version of an exercising of choice, like to really hammer the point home that you do have a choice. In the same way that he chooses every day to live, he could choose one day to die and end it. It wouldn't surprise me if tons of people did that. In some ways, it'd be a way to go out on his own terms. Um, you know, not a fun thought, but it is one that, like, exists. Yes, thank you. Not so much pro-suicide, pro-autonomy, right? Like, pro, you have the choice of what it is that you're going to do here under the most awful circumstance that you could ever imagine. I mean, how many people right now would raise their hand and say, yeah, I want to live in a bunker, windowless bunker with Ted Farrow and try to make sure that he's immune while I live under constant fear for my life and my daughter's life? How many of you are signing up for that? Well, I said, your option is that or death. How many of you are going to take death? How many of you are going to say, you know what? I'm going to go walk out on my front lawn and wait for a Horace to just mow me down because that sounds way better than dealing with what this guy had to deal with. You know, the other option is they could kill said Pharaoh. I mean, I don't know how easy that would have been. I, I, I get a sense that he's in a very vulnerable position with this guy, but that's the power, right? Like you create the illusion that, that doing anything to Ted is going to have bad ramifications for you. The, the, the amount of complexity in this situation, in this bunker, in this general environment that these people were in 
is unbelievable. It's what makes this game and this world that Gorilla created to me so unbelievably rich. It's what's made it so much fun for me to talk through and analyze for all of you because like these are scenarios that are totally realistic. I mean, they're like, this is how you, you could ostensibly see things going this way if this was to happen. And it's terrible. It's unbelievable what the humans will endure. But Ted existed on the illusion of power. Ted was able to manipulate the people around him with resources, resources that everybody collectively said, said mattered. You know, it's kind of, you know, like in Fallout where bottle caps became currency and cash became meaningless. Like, it's kind of amazing, like in a collective, if everybody just decided all of a sudden that the dollar is worthless, Ted has trillions of it. And they go, nah, nah, Ted. If you want me to build this bunker for you, you got to pay me in food. Ted's like, well, fine, I'll go buy you a million dollars worth of food. But the person that takes food says, no, your dollar's not worth anything. Now, all of a sudden, Ted doesn't have resources. He doesn't have power. Like, it's all built on construction, which has always fascinated me. All right, let's keep going. You saw something. I could tell. Did the data explain what Pharaoh used this device for? I think he was undergoing treatments to live longer. A lot longer. Really? Could he still be alive? Don't be foolish. If he were alive, he would have kept his essence. And if he's alive, I don't mean shit. <laughs> he doesn't want Ted Farrow to be alive. He does not want Ted Farrow to be alive. He wants to be Ted Farrow. He doesn't, this, uh-uh. So this is, it, it, it's so beautiful. I love this so much because now this guy is present. He is he is the embodiment of Ted Farrow. He is Ted Farrow until Ted Farrow potentially exists. And then all of a sudden he's fully engaged with his autonomy. Now I'm Tim Johnson, <laughs> a guy who doesn't mean shit to anything because the actual Ted Farrow exists. Like, if you think you're the second coming of Christ, and then all of a sudden Christ shows up, you're like, oh, god damn it. Like, the OG's here. G Jesus himself is standing next to me. Who am I now? Right? Second coming is a lot less exciting when the first one's there. So he doesn't want Ted Farrow to be alive. He's on the same ego trip. This is about him. This is about Tim Johnson. It would not have been passed down to me. Remember, he was the renewer. Of course, he would have stopped at nothing to grasp the secrets of life and death, but not for himself. Everything <laughs> he did was for a new beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure it was. <coughs> Oh, these people remember Ted by his intentions, not by his impact. Generally a better idea to remember people by their impact. For us, for the Quen, and for his true heir, me. You know, I'm starting to think you're right. You do have a lot in common with Ted Farrow. Thank I you. I knew you would see in time. <laughs> Let us continue. His secrets await. <laughs> I, I love it. He thinks that's a compliment. It's so, <laughs> it's so great. Oh my God. <clears throat> oh man. Just got here, but do you think there's a nature argument to be made for this guy's Ted Farrow ego, like genetically or nurture side? So I talked about this a little bit um, at the door of the facility. Uh, of I think this is a lot more of like a, a nurture. It's a lot more like his his 
I believe that the way that he's showing up has a lot more to do with his idealization of Ted Farrow's mannerisms and beliefs. And they don't have the full picture of Ted. So they're, they are they are entirely founded upon the Ted Farrow that was lauded by the people around him, not by the Ted Farrow that we remember or know about that ended up being the demise of humanity and was kind of an egomaniac. It's, it's really amazing how the lack of context creates such a different vibe. But I think this guy idealized Ted. He thinks he is Ted, and so he's acting like Ted. This is... Hmm. Is that a small office? For a minor functionary, perhaps? Maybe. Oh, by the way, YouTube and Twitch, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this. I'm honored that you care about what I have to say about these games. Um, I don't claim to be the arbiter of truth. I don't claim to know everything. I don't think I'm smarter than anybody else here. I just share my thoughts. And so I appreciate that you care about them. So thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up. <clears throat> don't spoil stuff in the comments. Thank you. Heat rising. An automated geothermal energy plant right under the city of San Francisco. A marvel. Even I can run it. And let's face it, I was always more of a visionary than an engineer. Which is why I had the foresight to insist on the inclusion of a very unique feature. Just in case anyone ever tries to steal my cheese, so to speak. Oh, that's all you're going to give me, Teddy? Come on, buddy. Look at all this equipment. We are getting closer to the heart of this place. I can feel it. Oh, God. I just want Omega clearance. That's all I want. He's freaking Cave Johnson. <laughs> He's a lot less funny than Break Cave Johnson. Break the door down. I'm going to look for another way in. Good idea. It's worked before. It works Very well. every time. Get to it. Shut up. We need to get moving. Take, take that tone with me. The thing is, though, I'm just going to further empower to, him to take Hurry! that tone. Oh, my. Break it open. Holy hell, bro. Jeez. They can't. See, he's powerless right now. Powerless. Reactor report. Reactor status, weak 50,844. Power 61%, efficiency 54%, structural integrity 41. Base temp, 1876 Fahrenheit. Core temp, 541 Fahrenheit. Condition nominal, safeguard operational. Warning, structural integrity low. Core vulnerable. Any disturbance may trigger safeguard protocol. Is that right? Well, well, well. Let me guess, there's a vent that my hookshot perfectly connects to. Gotta get closer. Try again. Good thing they let me bring it in my business attire. Ah! Let's open that door! Oh my god. I'm about to put 28 stab wounds into that guy. She's gone. Did she make it to the other side? Again, leave him at the door. Just leave him at the door, Aloy. Go explore the whole facility. There's no need for him to be with us right now. None. A console. Maybe I can access Ted's files from here. That would be great. There. Omega clearance. Got it. 
Good. Get out of there. Now get out of there. What do you have to say for yourself, Ted? Stormtown's dead. Along with his kid. Found him on the floor of his office this morning holding hands. Must have poisoned themselves. Wow. Holy crap. There you go. I never would have put them to sleep. She was just a girl, for Christ's sake. I offered them life. And this is how they repaid me. By leaving me all alone. But I guess I've been alone since this whole thing began. Alone in bearing the burden. For the past. For the future. Same old Ted. Poor Ted. No matter who dies, mm. he's the one feeling sorry for himself. Bless his future. Bless his children. Someday they'll come. And I'll be here to greet them. Thing is, dude. Okay. I, I, right? Like, I'm sitting here playing the world's smallest violin. Poor Teddy. Bleh. Um, it is so hard to empathize with Ted Farrow. It's so hard to do it, okay? And like I said many times in the past through these two games, I don't expect that any of you can do it. You want to hate Ted Farrow? Be my guest. The guy has done horrible things. The guy sees the world in a way that I think very few people can connect with. All right. But if you'll indulge me for just a, just a couple minutes here, uh, I'm not going to condone any of Ted's behavior, but I do want to talk about why Ted would believe what he believes and see what he sees. He is so hypersensitive to essentially an inductive way of viewing the world, which is that Ted has never either, either learned or been taught to separate his own experience from his perceptions of the world around him. Everything Ted Farrow sees is filtered through his ego. And in a lot of ways, that would be torture. And the reason I say that is because, you know, over the years being a therapist, knowing people in my own personal life, if you know anybody in your life who has a tendency to over-personalize just about everything in their life, you probably know what their general experience is like. It's awful. Where, you know, you're two people that you love or that you were aware of their existence and shared this bunker with you kill themselves and you immediately think that that has to do with you. You see your neighbor get in a fight with their spouse and you're like standing in your house watching across the street and you see them in an argument and the first thing you think is, are they arguing about something that I was involved with? Are they mad because their Christmas decorations don't keep up with how good mine are. Like, to an extreme, which I think Ted Farrow represents the extreme, over-personalization and ecocentrism is a, is, a, is a prison. And he is so meticulously aware of all of the, like he's he's not just some dude. He's a guy that threw his weight around in the most profound way in all of human history. And so in his mind, I am sure that Ted knows that the demise of humanity is in a lot of ways on him. And if there is any monochrome of empathy and understanding of that, which in Ted's case, I think there is by the way that he's engaged with people. That is devastating. 
That is something that is a level of enormity that I don't think any of us have the mental wherewithal to be able to actually withstand. And so Ted does what I believe anybody in Ted Farrow's position would do, which is he takes the complete opposite route as a means to try to understand himself in the world, which is he becomes an asshole, he becomes apathetic, he blames others, he pushes forward, he stays positive, he controls other things, like he just won't go there. Because to go there would be so just unbelievably soul crushing, right? Like the idea that Samtao and his daughter would poison themselves and kill themselves because he facilitated an environment and a world at large that is so miserable that they chose the release of death over perpetuating life that he believes he was capable of giving them. That's a, te that's a terrible thought. Sit with that for, ask yourself, like how would you feel if you knew two people killed themselves because the environment you created for them was so horrible? That's a really hard thing for people to wrap their heads around. And so a coping strategy would be to go on the route that, that Ted went. So how could they do this to me? I'm the victim here. It sucks. It means that Ted Farrell made a lot of really shitty decisions over the course of his life and unfortunately had the resources to hurt a lot of people. But, you know, again, as a therapist, it's my job to try to find the ways to empathize with why people would tick the way that they tick. And in my opinion, that's why Ted operates the way that he does is because he so extremely filters everything that happens to him inductively. And it's a spiral and a vortex he just can't, he couldn't get himself out of, probably because he never learned how. He probably didn't have the right kind of scaffolding for that. Because that would be something that in some ways you have to learn, particularly if, I mean, if it's something that's that extreme, you probably need extra attention on it, but. It's a shame because the thing that I think of immediately is in Ted Farrow's development as a child, teenager, and young adult, he probably didn't have the right kind of environment around him to help him think more deductively and to help separate himself from things he sees, to recognize that like, despite the fact that he is the main character in his own story, there's a lot of things that happen around him that don't have anything to do with him. Taken to that extreme, then he would not take accountability for anything. The, the, the happy medium here is for Ted Farrow to take accountability for the impact that he has and then also try to like do better and learn from it. And unfortunately, that second part just doesn't seem to be there. But Ted is, in a lot of ways, a scapegoat for decisions. I agree with you, Aegon. Ted is a scapegoat for a lot of bad decisions that were made across humanity. We talked about that in Zero Dawn. The United States didn't have to buy his robots as militarist, militaristic weapons. They didn't have to do it. Uh, they did. It, consumers could have voted with their dollar with him. Uh, like there's, There are a lot of people that are at play here, but Ted's an easy one to pin this all on because of the fact that he puts his name on everything and was the ideological wizard behind a lot of it. All right, anyway. Just wanted to take a second to do that. I try to do that in every playthrough. Um, I just think it's a really important exercise of the mind to try to find ways to empathize. It doesn't mean you have to condone Ted's actions. You don't have to agree with anything he did. You don't have to support him. You can hate him all you want. But you can still try to find ways to empathize with why he would do what he did. And you can, do, you can learn from that. And try not to repeat that. Go. Sometimes that my aging has stopped altogether. If anything, my cells are replenishing faster than normal. I just need some time for the mutations to calm down. Time. And energy. Sometimes that the reactor can give me what I need. To grow strong again to get my shit back together so I can greet the kids. They're gonna need me. Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. My advice. Oh my God. My guidance. He 
wanted to live. He wanted to he wanted to live long enough that when Gaia reset the world and figured it out, he would be the shepherd of all the kids. He wanted to be he he nuked Apollo because he wanted to be in control of the way in which history was disseminated. He wanted pure control over all of humanity, dude. He essentially sees humanity as machines and put a kill switch in humans because he didn't put a kill switch in the bots. And so now he like wants to be this like Messiah dude that when the kids wake up, and then he's like, hi, children, I'm Daddy Teddy, and I'm, I'm, call me Teddy Bear, if you will, and I am going to, I'm going to be your source of comfort in this time. I'm going to teach you all that there is to know about the world. I live forever. You will not. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to learn yourself some stuff. You're going to idealize me. I'm going to control every single piece of your view of me, which now has me wondering, like, I mean, I don't think there's probably kill switches in all of us, but like, that would be wild if there were kill switches in all of us. But like, that's a, just an unbelievable, like that is the ultimate manifestation of Ted Farrow's ego is to be able to control everything. That is wild, dude. But I don't put it past him. And then I won't be alone anymore. Pharaoh's secrets, are they here? Uh, not the ones you're looking for. Then they must be in there. Power. Trust me. You don't want to go in there. Are you mad? I haven't come all this way to stop now. Shoot him, Aloy. Literally kill him right now. You have fought way worse. Oh, man. Oh, man. At last, Pharaoh's legacy is mine. Lock him in. Is Ted Pharaoh's zombie in here? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. Is that? It's him. Oh my god. Burn it to ash. Oh my god. Wait, no. Pharaoh has it rigged to melt down if kill them too. No witnesses. Okay, no approach. Open fire! What? Got her in my sight! Now! They better show it. I better see what Teddy looks like. Oh boy, this is. Try! Can you use this? Did it! Pharaoh rigged the reactor to overflow if he dies. We have to run. Wow, we don't get to see him? Oh, lame. All right. Oh my God, there's lava in here. I need to see it. I came all this way. Man, these guys are dedicated. Oh. Oh. I can step in lava, apparently. Cool. 
Oh my god. You're on fire, Aloy. It'll pass. Maybe. What? <laughs> I can just walk through lava in my business attire. Business attire, bro. No, definitely not. Jeez. Honestly, it's cliche as hell, but I love it. Dude, he's dead. You don't have to. You don't have to do this anymore, bro. found something that will help not just your homeland but everywhere nice smart but where's the CEO oh, he's gone smart move here is I and this is painful for me to say this is so painful for me for me to say but you got to make the smart moves when you're in this position you got to martyr the CEO you've got to do it You, 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 you say part of the reason I was able to access this was because the CEO was able to get us access to the office. Like he sacrificed himself. He did it for the good of his people. His parting words were one of, we all need to collectively work together. We learned some things down there about Ted Farrow that were not particularly savory. It's going to be hard for us all to digest. But he seemed like he was interested in sharing that information with all of you. And so as the person who was there with him when that happened, I will happily do that on his behalf. In his honor. It's so painful to do that. But that's the way you get their buy-in here. You get them to believe that the good information that you're giving them about the reality of Ted Farrow was something that the CEO wanted them to know. It's, you got to work with what you got. You can't work with what you wish you had. You got to work with what you have. And that's what we have. That's our in. So let's see if that's what they do. I, I don't know if Aloy is going to think fast enough on that, but Alva might. I guess you could say he gave his life to help us attain the secrets of Thebes. Yes. 
I see. Yes. Thank you, Alva. Yes. You must think I'm eminently stupid. Oh, boy. What? No. No. The CEO was an entitled egotist who twisted our beliefs into a sickening, self-serving fantasy. And you expect me to believe he sacrificed himself for scraps of data? <laughs> it's time for the truth, and you better be convinced. <laughs> what? Otherwise, I'll simply order these soldiers to open fire. <laughs> well played, Gorilla. Well played. That was awesome. Holy shit. Hold on. You're right. To be honest, the CO screwed everything up. He brought thieves down around our ears and died like a gutless coward. But we really did find something down there that will help your homeland. If I can take it and use it. Now, if I have to, I will fight my way out of here, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can just let me go. And then take credit when things start to improve. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Success certainly does sound better than failure. Cool. It seems then that our destinies are intertwined. Landfall is open to you. Wow. If it will help your cause, you may come and go as you please. But Alva must join you and report back on your efforts. Fair enough. Thebes is of no further value to us. Obviously, we're going back to the flotilla. Alva, I expect your reports to be thorough. Oh, I thought he was going to have us killed. Oh, and instead, I get to join you. Glad to have you. But you're going to need a little help to reach our base. Varl, I made a new friend. I need you to meet her at the Quen Ferry and escort her back. On it. Can't wait to meet her. Trust me, you'll love it there. Varl will give you a better focus, and... All the data you could ever want. Head to the ferry. I'll join you back east as soon as I can. A diviner must follow the truth, wherever it leads. I'll see you there. Let's get these robes off, huh? Wow. Okay, well... Uh, yeah. I still stand by what I said of, like, you take the martyr route. I appreciate that that guy was willing to come in hot on the reality and way to adjust. That was a beautiful adjustment by Aloy there to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, you're right. Cool. You're in on it. <laughs> that was awesome, though. I really like because I, I just the problem is I don't you can't assume that. I, I really don't think you can you can assume that Bohai was aware of how you like maniacal that guy was because he's sitting there going my you know my lord my blah 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 blah. we don't have enough context we didn't have enough chance to get to know bohai in order to be able to like understand that he thinks the guy is full of shit so you got to make that call um good on him for giving us a shot there and basically being like no tell me the real truth so cool man wow what a great mission that was really cool. Now that I have Omega clearance, we should have what we need to capture Hephaestus. But before I head to the ferry, maybe I should stop by Landfall. With the CO gone, maybe more Quen will be willing to talk. You probably will. It'll be worth looking around the island, too. Dude.
Okay. So yeah, we'll go hit up. I mean, yeah, we got a lot of shit to do here. We got a black box to go get. I mean... Yes. Get to keep the robes, apparently. Yep. Wow, 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 wow. We have a look at the Raymond stats. Oh, no. Oh, wait, there we go. Uh, Valor Surge, Deep Concentration, Stamina Regen. A Quen Ceremonial Raymond made to honor Ancestor Elizabeth Sobek, so-called assistant to Ted Farrow. <laughs> The fire resistance, yeah, a thousand fire oh, resistance. Quite a move. All right. Wow. Uh, let's go. I really want to get this black box. What a wild ride. Golden Gate Bridge. This must have been so fun to make. Like, hey, let's take San Francisco, put it half underwater, and then make it all overgrown. Oh, boy. Put some gators in there. I'm so bummed we didn't get to see Ted. There's got to be some fan art out there of what he looked like. I'm imagining he looked like one of those, like, husks from Mass Effect. From, like, Mass Effect 3. I will say there is some, like, poetic justice in the fact that he lived for 974 years. It's probably in utter misery. I can find a voice recording here. Isle of Spires. Oh, shit. sense uh where do we want to go here oh yeah that's fire gleam there must be another flight recorder transmitting a signal Maybe I uh if there is where would it be I don't know. Where would it be, Mr. Jiro? Where would it be? Probably down here. We haven't gone down there yet. I'll track it down.
I like that there's trolley cars down here. Did Jiro sm snooze through that whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> He's awake right now doing the slow blink thing at me. He keeps closing. Oh, he's closed his eyes again. He's probably back to sleep. He's chilling, man. He's the most chill cat ever. He just sits on my lap the whole time. It's great. The Lombardment. Data corrupted to more than 20 arrests. Go Hollow, the popular focus game that caused the upheaval, challenged its players to defend the Lombard Street Hill from a virtual invasion. Players can be called upon for such activities without forewarning to a real location within their proximity. Go Hollow has already been criticized as potentially dangerous for several reasons, one being the risk of traffic accidents. These warnings became reality when thousands of players, ranging from teenagers to seniors, flooded Lombard Street and the surrounding area in an event that became known as the Lombardment. The unannounced surge of activity caused a series of incidents. Some older players succumbed to the heat and a teen was hospitalized after being trampled in the rush. SFPD units were dispatched to disperse the crowd, but witnesses report that several officers in fact took part in the game event, donning hollow skins of their Go Hollow avatars. A departmental investigation is data corrupted. Oh boy. From the old world. That building doesn't look like any of the ruins around here. Maybe it's underwater now. Ooh, it's the building that gets shown a bunch of times in the room. The hell is that? What is on the other? Oh, cool. A spine guy. I forget what that building, I don't know what that building is, because I've never been to San Francisco, but. I'm gonna have to fight this dude. Hey, get off the beach, bro. Your girl's gotta do a little vista here. Shoot that battery pack. There we go. Hatch is eating at its armor.
Okay. Uh, let's get down here. I could look around with my focus, try to match the Vista Point image. Huh. The image shows part of the giant bridge and a domed building. And with all these submerged ruins around here, maybe I should take a dive. Is that a hint, Aloy? Hey, there we go. Making the noise. Yeah, no shit. How precise do I have to freaking be, man? That did it. Got it. All right. Shrouded Heights. Welcome to the Grand Gate stop of our Vista Point tour, brought to you by Miriam Technologies and the Coalition for Environmental Reclamation. The Grand Gate Bridge. Its span acts as a gateway to San Francisco, while the water below is a conduit to the Pacific Ocean, which by 2040 had reached critical levels of human-made contaminants. The clawback area era saw massive reductions to seaborne plastic pollution, and Miriam Technologies is proud to continue that trend. In fact, the new roadway atop the bridge was made with repurposed petroleum-based waste products dredged from ocean waters by our machines. Comments, Emmett. Miriam Technologies deserves our thanks. Jali, never thought I would get to see the Grand Gate. My journey's almost over. Only one more stop and one more note to leave behind. Radhawk, kinda want a drone drop from the top of the bridge. Ride down would be swank. Big Randy, glad I don't have to swim around and eat plastic all day. That would... Data corrupted. What? What? Yeah, the vistas in the first game were awesome. I loved reading that guy's like letters to himself. It was so great.
Yo! Oh man, there's like a there's a horse on the bridge. Wow. To the Golden Gate Bridge, giant ass Horus. Wow. Well, we will do some. Uh, we will do some exploring of San Francisco, and then we will make our way back to the base of operations in part forty. Friends, thank you for hanging out with me and Dr. Jiro. I appreciate your support of these playthroughs so much i am so grateful that you care about what i have to say i hope that you will continue with this playthrough uh, it means a lot to me he sleeps through the whole thing uh but seriously it's uh this has been a lot of fun this game is really great i i'm enjoying it so much so uh, it, this is a this is a good one to have be the longest stream, which part forty will mean you've officially made it to the longest stream at the time of filming. Leave a like, leave a comment, follow the links in the description. Even if it's just to tell me that my kitty's the best. If you're binging. I'll see you over in part forty. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, I'll get it out as soon as I can. Bye bye. Bye bye.